are now joined in the studio by our guest. Now, before I uh, before I mention that, I do have to mention that a few days ago, it was the International Day for Eliminating Violence Against Women. And on that occasion, we today here on Rise and Shine are hosting two wonderful guests. We're talking to Talar Karakashian, the project manager for USAID's Takamul program, and Nirmina Abedad, the deputy chief of the party for USAID's Takamul program. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Thank you. you. Let's start off by talking, first of all, about what it means when we say gender-based violence. What does that mean? Uh, Thank you for hosting us. It's like when uh, when we talk about gender-based violence, it's any type of uh, inappropriate behavior that is uh, practiced on uh, females or males of different ages, whether they are children, youth or adults. And uh, the impact is obviously quite severe because it's not just bodily harm, there's also a psychological factor at play. Exactly. There's different types of uh, gender-based violence. It could be physical, it could be verbal, it could be uh, psychological. Uh, But in Jordan, we are focusing more on uh, the physical abuse because the majority of the types of violence we have uh, is that one, unfortunately. Yeah, it even includes financial. Uh, So it's depriving uh, a lady, for example, of her salary, or accounting for it, so it can it, it can it does encompass a lot of types of violence. Is that a common thing here in Jordan? We do have that. Yes, yes. And uh, how serious are we talking about? I mean, I, I don't want to I don't want you guys to have to throw out statistics and and, and, and numbers if you, if you don't want to. But I mean, how big of an issue is it in the Arab world and and in the world as a whole? It is a major uh, issue in Jordan, especially that most of the um, uh, gender-based violence types uh, are practiced without uh, uh, without the abused being aware that this is a type of violence. Uh, so again, we don't want to throw out uh, statistics, but it is a high percentage in Jordan and globally as well. Well, what, what, what brings us to this point? I mean, what leads human beings to impose abuse on other human beings? What leads people to act this way and think that it's okay that they can get away with it? Unfortunately, I think most of the time people aren't aware unnecessarily that this is abuse, that they are being violent. Uh, Sometimes it's entitlement, it's a sense of entitlement, and sometimes it's misunderstanding of cultural values. Mm -hmm. It's misuse of um, roles, uh, assuming that, oh, if I'm the caretaker or I'm in charge, then I can do, I can use all means to affect my control. It's funny because actually yesterday Ben and I were talking about the video, uh, the Moroccan video, which came out, which yeah. which showed uh, yes. apparently a news station or a TV station showing how to use makeup to, to hide domestic abuse. And the whole point is that we shouldn't be hiding. We should be trying to, you know, raise knowledge and that it is happening regularly. How do you do that? How do you bridge the gap between ignorance and knowledge? Well, um, through our USAID Takamal program, uh, we've been since the beginning of the program trying to zoom into these gender challenges and gaps, uh, especially, you know, gender based violence. And uh, we try as much as possible to use creative tools and methods to uh, reframe these issues and then present them to the public, to the Jordanian public, uh, and allow them to create conversations about it and talk about it further, explore it, uh, investigate it, investigate the reasons, the causes of it, uh, the way the uh, society accepts or uh, does not accept them. Uh, And then uh, we uh, create general debates about these uh, issues. uh, And hopefully most of the times we end up with calls to action, uh, especially on the grassroots uh, level with youth and with women who are engaged in our program. I was going to ask actually resistance. Um, Do you face it and are you surprised when you face resistance, either from the males or the females? Uh, Based on what Talar just mentioned, like exploring the roles between uh, of men and women, um, thank God we've been very successful with our program in focusing on these roles of women and men. And our name is Takamul, which means the uh, complementary roles between the two. And um, the resistance is minimal because people uh, are eager to achieve this equity between men and women, to have equal opportunities, whether it's economic, whether it's penetrating the public sphere, uh, whether getting uh, exposed to uh, similar experiences as human beings. And uh, the resistance is minimal, uh, and the enthusiasm and the positive energy is really big and recognizable. 
We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, USAID Takamwal's uh, campaign to fight gender-based uh, abuse. When we come back, we're going to take a short break. If you guys have any comments or questions for them, now is the time to send them in to us on Facebook or Twitter at Radio Bliss Joe. You can also WhatsApp us on 0 1043 Bliss 104.3. You guys are tuned in to Rise and Shine. Uh, with us in the studio now, we have some very, very special guests indeed. Talar, uh, Talar Karakashian, a project manager. Manager for USAID's Takamal program, and of course, Nermeen Amadat, a deputy chief of party for USAID's Takamal program. Now, speaking of USAID, we want to know why they're investing so much time and effort in gender campaigns in Jordan so far. Yeah, so I mean, this is um, focusing on um, gender issues is a priority of USAID globally, and we constantly are part of the annual global campaign to combat. Um, gender-based violence. But in Jordan, uh, we have a strategic priority to enhance gender equality and female empowerment. We know that this is crucial when it comes to economic empowerment, political empowerment. If we have half of society dormant, not uh, active, then we're missing a lot. The entire society is missing out. And And today is day three? Today is day six of the campaign. Today six, okay. Yes, and uh, because we are so passionate about gender equality, we actually have a dedicated program that focuses on this, which is the Takamal program. So we're addressing gender equality and female empowerment mainly through two ways, creating social dialogue opportunities, just to address some of the social norms and things that we've been used to, um, and uh, uh, supporting advocacy and policy change, because we know that both are needed. What are some of the workshops and seminars that you're you're holding throughout the 16-day campaign to create awareness? We're actually um, doing it uh, two ways. One way is that we're supporting grassroots organizations. We're working with more than 50 community-based organizations from across Jordan. We're engaging uh, specifically, in addition to all of the networks that these communities have, these organizations have 150 youth that are doing their own campaigns, their own initiatives, their own activities within their communities that address gender-based violence. They're using some of the tools that we've developed that we're gonna be talking about and the online campaign that we're using. And they're just creating awareness and being very creative in how they address it. They're very passionate about this cause, so we're only supporting them. Excellent. And let's talk about that social media campaign. And I thought this was really interesting. I have seen some of the videos you guys have up already. It's uh, a twist on the on the typical Arab proverbs that might actually uh, be controversial when we were talking about women or they might uh, negatively impact women. And uh, you have this amend hashtag amend your proverb mm-hmm. twist. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, basically, you know, um, the team of Takamul, which I would like to uh, say good morning to all of them (laughs) now because uh, I'm sure they're listening to us. Uh, We sat all together like, you know, six months ago uh, with our fellows as well. And we were discussing like themes for this year's campaign. And we really wanted to do something different. Uh, Something could attract everybody, you know, children, youth and adults. And also let us all together zoom into gender stereotypes that could be part of our lives just simply by the proverbs we keep you know mentioning and repeating and then we were like aha we should do this campaign amend your proverb and uh, but we wanted to do it in a you know different way so we said we have like lots of followers on social media it's the channel in Jordan uh, to have like you know um, a maximum outreach and uh, we said like we will do these animated videos using the uh, proverbs but then we had to research these proverbs. So out of 600 proverbs that we've collected, we found that these 16 uh, proverbs, um, you know, stick out as uh, not being gender sensitive. And uh, we went to the communities, to our champions in the communities, youth, women, and men, and we discussed these 16 proverbs with them. And we uh, talked to them about, you know, the different aspects of how people understand them and how they communicate them and how they become part of their uh, social and human behavior Mm -hmm. and we validated that you know these uh, proverbs are not gender sensitive and then we worked on the scripts um, and the animation um, and now they are on uh, online do you have any examples that you can think of off the top of your head? Some yeah. of the uh, well, we don't want to burn all the proverbs that we didn't <laughs> announce yet. At least but, one. Uh, <laughs> the two uh, most popular ones uh, are like uh, Darbil Habib 
Habib's Beeb, like mm-hmm. uh, beating of a beloved one is like eating uh, raisins. And the other one is Albinat um, uh, um, which indicates like, you know, the, the importance of early marriage and making marriage and starting a family a priority over education and work. Um, and the types of comments, conversations that are created uh, around these two br- proverbs uh, and the others are really amazing. It's really an eye opener. Because you guys then offer a twist on that. Problem. Exactly, yeah, like you yeah. said, man. So we changed them, and basically, Darb al Habib's Beeb is now Darb al Habib Beeb. So it actually brings shame if you hit a beloved one. And, and this is why we want this to resonate with women and men. So we're changing this because, you know, proverbs are part of our cultural heritage, and this is what we pass on to future generations. That's a very, very uh, powerful campaign there. Uh, and uh, there is one thing that we were discussing a little bit earlier that Tam had brought up about the video that came out mm-hmm. um, on the channel that later apologized and saying that it was not sensitive to women and uh, may have taken, may have uh, had an error in judgment. Um, but uh, we also discussed the fact that some women actually do feel shame and yeah. do want to cover up. How do we encourage them to to overcome that shame so rather than be silent and suppress it to actually go out there and speak yeah this is a very important question and uh, there's no like one correct way to do it but uh, through our program we encourage talking about it uh, whether in private spheres or in the public spheres and that's why we've established these networks for women and youth and men uh, to enable them through different activities to just talk about you know uh, how they feel about it and then discuss with others the best ways to um, you know fight it um, how to seek the right service, whether it's within the, the, the same family or the community or through the public services that are offered. And uh, we'd like to know what are some of the public services that are offered and what, what are the best venues to sort of, you know, seek help? Yeah. So this is this is the challenge um, in place is that the services that are available for women who are at risk of violence or survivors of, vi- of violence are very, very limited. Mm. Uh, we do support, as you say, some of the organizations that do exist and provide either shelter or helplines, uh, whether it's in Tafile, there is a helpline where you can actually talk to someone who can tell you how to deal with this, how to um, try to um, survive it or live through it. But the official services are still not mature Mm. and this is something that we hope to support and address going forward so the first step is the raising the awareness and advocating for this thank you so much for joining us today uh talad and Nermin. if people want more information about the takamul campaign and the program in general where can they go to see that Oh, please visit the Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. visit our pa- Facebook page, Takamul Jordan. And also we have another popular page, which is uh, Faces of Takamul Al Urdun. Uh, and you can always email us at info at Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank, Thank you. you.